Today I'm building a bar cart for miners. It's equipped with everything a miner needs to stay properly hydrated with a little class while working in the mine. We have our glasses, ice bucket, wine storage, and it's all on one cart ready to travel down the tracks. The first step I needed to build a bending form to do a bent lamination to create the arches for the ends. To make sure I had a good square surface to clamp to, I used a table saw to plunge cut a straight line in the center of my template. We'll come back to this inner cut in a minute. I cut the initial shape out on the bandsaw and then spent some time fairing the curve with a little hand sanding. Once I was satisfied with the curve, I went back to the bandsaw and cut out the inner ring. I made sure I cut a series of flat spots for the clamps to bite to. To create the offset for the outer clamping blocks, I used a router bit that was close to the same diameter as the thickness is what the arch is going to be. I cut the outer ring into segments, and then glued and screwed layers of plywood to build up to the thickness I needed, and then routed them to shape with the pattern bit at the router table. To create the bent lamination, I resawed some oak down to about an eighth inch thick, and then prepped it for glue up. I used a plastic resin glue that dries hard with very little spring back. This type of glue comes as a powder that has to be mixed with water, so to protect myself from the powder, I made sure I wore my respirator during the whole operation. When I cut the strips, I made sure that I kept track of the order they were cut in. This will help disguise the cut lines and allow the grain to flow from one piece to the other, uh, making it look like it's one piece. Once I got all the pieces stacked up, I screwed my form down to the table to prevent it from moving. This kind of glue up is going to require some force to get it to bend around the form, so I didn't want anything to move on me. Then I just worked my way from the center to each end, clamping as I go, making sure I clamped out all the gaps. I needed two of them and each one had to sit in the clamps for a full day. So while the glue was curing, I went to work building the frame for the cart. For the cart, I used some 3 inch channel and cut out the basic parts for the frame. I work mainly in a wood shop and there's a lot of wood and sawdust laying around, so to contain the sparks from the metal working, I hung some uh, fiberglass fire resistant uh, tarps from the ceiling. Then I went to work grinding off all the mill scale, cleaning up each part. To add some additional detail to the cart, I traced the inner shape of the channel onto some flat bar and cut it out. Before welding on the cap, I drilled some holes on the ends of the frame and in the caps themselves. The frame itself will be welded together. However, to give it a little steampunk vibe, you know, a little artistic depth, I'm going to add some large rivets in these holes. This will give it that look and feel that it's held together by rivets and not really just welded together. Then I welded it into place to create an end cap and once it's ground smooth, it'll look monolithic. I welded the end caps on, ground them flush, then welded up the frame. Now moving on to the frame for the wood bar top. I laid out for more rivets, propped the angle iron up on an old 2x4, and drilled out the holes. Then to install the rivets, I just tack welded them in place from behind. From there, I clamped up the frame, checked it for square, and welded it up. I picked up some hooks from the tractor supply store so I could modify them so they looked like they were custom made for the cart. They came galvanized and painted so I had this jar of custom blend of acid laying around so I soaked them for about 10 minutes in the jar to remove any galvanizing and paint. The acid was strong enough to also etch into the metal giving it kind of an old timey look. I cut the rings for the cotter pin off then cut a strip of metal to mount it to. I drilled a couple of holes in the sides and in the strip that will later weld some rivets in to give it the illusion that this plate was attached to the cart with rivets. I think these little details give the piece more depth and visual interest. I moved on to making a custom mount for the hook. I split the end of the channel in half, creating two L pieces that I welded together. Once I grind the weld flush, it will look like it was one piece. 
I drilled a hole for the hooks cotter pin to go through and welded it to the mount that had the same holes for the rivets. These clips I'm welding on are what the wood brace is going to attach to to hold up the top. I know, I know, it would be cool if the cart rolled around on the wheels, but I don't think it would be cool after it scratched the client's hardwood floors. So I welded the wheels in place, and before I deliver it to the client, I will make some custom pads to go under the steel wheels. Now back to the bent lamination rings. I wanted to add a metal band around them tight to the wood, kind of like a wagon wheel. I had this plan that I would build a forge to heat the metal up and bend it around the wood template. We'd have some smoke, some flames. It would be a really dramatic piece of video to show you. But as the delivery date loomed on for this project, I didn't have enough time to build one and the cost of buying a forge was out of the cards. So I decided to cold bend it in a less dramatic way. So I bent it around my form to get the general shape started and then went back and forth between my cold bender and the form uh, to take out the spring back. This banding is going to have some decorative rivets installed in it as well. So I drilled some holes in it to accept the rivets and the rivets will be welded in from behind just like before. Once I was satisfied with the bend and the rivet placement, I turned my attention to cleaning up the wood portion of the bent lamination. I used the joiner to clean up one edge of the piece, and then for safety I added a taller auxiliary fence to my table saw, and then ripped it to width. And finally I cut the arches to length. I milled up some stock for cross braces. The thick cross brace is what is going to attach the bar to the cart. And the thinner piece is going to end up to be the end caps for the wine bottle holders. To be sure my arch pieces were in the right shape, I clamped the top piece in position, and then I traced the arch onto my end caps. I cut the curve out at the bandsaw, being sure to leave the line. Then I finessed the curve with my disc sander slowly sneaking up to the line. I did a little back and forth between checking the fit and sanding away until I got a perfect fit. I milled up some lumber to create the upper and lower panels for the wine rack. The wine rack is basically little cubbies for the bottles to slide into. I cut a dado down the center of the bottom board for the cubbies. Then I made a jig to help ensure that each cubby was spaced the exact same distance apart and that the corresponding dados in the top lined up exactly with the ones in the bottom. The jig is basically a strip of plywood cut to the width of the cubby plus the thickness of the divider. Then I glued a strip of wood onto that that would drop into the dado uh, to line everything up. This strip drops into the first dado, giving the router a place to ride against to locate the next dado. I worked my way from the center out and then did the same thing on the top. The only difference is that the top are stop dados. I squared up the datas with a mallet and chisel and moved on to cutting and fitting the cubby dividers. I didn't want the cubby dividers to have square ends, so I used the old paste wax can trick to draw in a radius. I cut it out at the bandsaw and cleaned it up with the spindle sander. I used the first one as a template to trace out the rest and repeated the fabrication process. I cut some slots for floating tins to be used to attach the end caps to the wine cubbies. Before I did the final assembly, I pre-finished all the parts using an ebonizing treatment to turn the wood black. The solution was a mixture of steel wool, vinegar, and hydrogen peroxide. 
Usually it takes a few minutes to turn the wood black. However, this solution was left over from a project last year, so fermenting it for a year seems to have made it especially potent and it is almost immediately turning the wood black as I apply it. While that was drying, I moved on to making the supports for the bar top. They're going to be decorative curves, so I printed out a template of the curves and laid them out on the wood, being sure I lined up the grain for the best strength I could get. Any weak spots where the grain uh, curves in the template could break. I rough cut the parts out at the bandsaw. Then jointed the edge where the two halves would come together and joined them together with floating tenons. After the glue dried, I made a plywood template and pattern routed it to the final shape. Now that the finish is dry on the wine cubbies, I did a little pre-assembly for this section. Once the glue dries, I'll clean up the glue squeeze out and finish ebonizing the rest of the case. Before attaching the arches to the wine cubby, I ran a dado down the center. This will give the parts of the rivets that stick out through the back of the metal banding a place to go. This was kind of an awkward glue up. There wasn't a lot of places to reference a square level line from. And my test fit revealed that the top panel was just a little bit too wide and the top needed to be scribed in, which meant several more test fits as I dialed it in. Now that I had the base dialed in, I didn't want to risk tweaking the arches out of shape by doing any kind of floating tenons the traditional way. So I set my mortise cutter to plunge as deep of a mortise as I could through the arch and into the side cross support. While the glue was drying, I sandblasted the steel frame to clean off all the mill scale and sprayed it down with a blackening agent. This turned the steel a dark rusty color, almost black. This also gave it an aged, greasy, well-used look like it just rolled out of the mine. We are down to the final assembly of the pieces. To be sure the steel band stayed tight to the wood, I used a high strength epoxy to glue the wood and steel band together. With the steel being etched with the blackening agent, the epoxy held really, really well. Next up was to attach the support pieces to the frame. I dipped some bolts in the acid solution to remove the chrome before using them and bolted them to the frame. I dropped the arches and wine cubby assembly into place and drilled the holes to attach the support pieces. To attach the bar top to the frame, I picked up the largest bolt the tractor supply store had in stock. This also added a nice industrial mining look to the cart. Then I tack welded the frame together that's going to hold the bar top in place. I did the final milling for the bar top and glued it all up. 
Once it was dry, I cut a dado around the perimeter so it would clear the back of the rivets that I had welded to the frame earlier. I went to the store and measured the base of several different wine glasses. And of course, I got some weird looks in the store as I was this weird guy with an angle finder and a tape measure sitting in the middle of the aisle surrounded by glasses. But hey, you gotta do what you gotta do. Once I knew what angle would accommodate the largest variety of wine glasses, I tipped the table saw blade to that angle and ripped some support strips. I ebonized and pre-finished those parts and when dry I used a few wine glasses to be sure I had the proper spacing and screwed them to the underside of the top. These little plastic spacers are to prevent someone from putting too many glasses in one slot and pushing one out the back. The final thing to do was to stage it for some photos. Thanks for watching.